This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform where you can create your own website. Do you guys know what this is? That's right, it's a laser cutting machine. And in case you can't tell, I'm pretty excited about this. So a little while back, this company called Flux reached out to me and asked me if I wanted one of their laser cutting machines. Obviously I said yes, so they sent me this thing. This is the Flux Beambox Pro. Quick disclaimer though, Flux didn't pay me any money for this, but they did send me this machine free of charge. This machine is able to cut and engrave in multiple different materials and thicknesses, everything from acrylic to wood, paper and cardboard. We'll get to trying out all those features in just a minute, but first, I want to make a dedicated space where this machine can live. Because this workshop really seems to get smaller and smaller with each and every project I finish on this channel, so I'll really have to start utilizing the space in here as efficiently as possible. And that's why I have an idea. Right now, when I got this machine, I just placed it on this table that I had. This table just happens to be motorized, which leads me to my idea. I'm going to make a big wall mount of frame I'll cannibalize the lift mechanism from the table so that I can build a big motorized shelf on that frame that will allow me to have easy access to my laser cutter, but when I'm not using it, I'll be able to lift it up and slide my Madrasal station right in underneath it. That way, I save a ton of space, the laser cutter is protected and a little bit out of the way when I'm not using it. On top of the laser cutter, I'm also going to build a shelving system with easy access to a ton of different materials and thicknesses that the laser is able to cut. I'm super excited for this, so let's start building. <laughs> Normally, I'd start by cutting out the individual pieces on my table saw. But since this thing is going to be pretty big, I'll just use my track saw and cut the big pieces on the table here. This board is going to make up the two side pieces. I'll mark up where I want to do the cuts and I'll cut everything with my track saw. And a couple of somewhat unconventional cuts later and just a little bit of work with a handsaw, we've got our side pieces. All right, now two of these side pieces and this back piece are gonna make up the main structure for this frame. <laughs> wow, now that it's all clamped together, you can get an idea of the general size of this thing. It's pretty big. That's the bottom, that's the top. In here is where the laser cutter is gonna go. The laser cutter is gonna move up and down like this. And the reason why this area is bigger is because up here is where all the pre-cut sheets of different materials are gonna go. So I'll have a ton of shelves stacked full of material in two rows, and this height just nicely fits the width of the material I can cut. I'll attach all this together with some screws at the top, and then we can start on those shelves. All right, the top is on. Time to build some shelves. Oh God, how am I gonna do this? Wow, this massive thing is still on the table. These shelves are not going to be structural to the frame. The stuff that we're going to have inside of them is not going to be heavy, so there's really no reason to make this harder than it needs to be. So I'm not going to worry about any screws or biscuits, I'm just going to glue everything in place. As you can see, I've made the frame slightly deeper than the material that we're going to store in it. That is because I want a little bit of space behind everything for where I can route the exhaust fumes from the laser cutter. I'll show you that once it's on the wall. The important part right now is that I'm going to glue in this backboard and I'll space it a little bit away from the bottom with these spacers. And I'll let you just glue the whole thing together. And a little trick for places like this where it's hard to get glue in between the parts, just add the glue in the corner, spread it out with your finger, and that actually gives a surprisingly strong bond. Next part is the divider that is going to go in the middle. For this, I'll use some super glue because I want it to stick right away. Some activator, I made some marks. Stick the thing on there, wait a few seconds, and we're good to go. Two temporary spacers for the sides and then shove in the next shelf. Now on the sides, just so I can take the spacers back out, I'm gonna just give it one brad nail so it doesn't move while the glue dries. A couple in the middle, and then just repeat that process until we have six shelves. And the last one is made out of plywood, and for some extra strength, in addition to the glue, I'm also gonna screw it from the sides. And I've also already cut the hole in the bottom for the exhaust. Now let that glue dry overnight and this whole thing is going to be plenty strong for what we're going to put in there. Why do I keep making these things bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier? Ah. No, too heavy. Nope. Ah. All right, that didn't work. I'm going to try something else. My confidence in this plan is like 37%. Ha ha ha! 
as sketchy as that was, the thing is on the grind and up against the wall. To make sure that the whole thing sits nice and level, I leveled it with some wedges and then marked the bottoms of both sides and trimmed off the excess with a jigsaw. Right now, the whole thing is perfectly level. I'm just gonna grab my hammer drill and attach it to the wall and then we can start mounting the laser. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Onto the lift mechanism. My plan is to take the tabletop off the table here, cut off all the unnecessary bits from the frame, and then we can use just the lift mechanism parts and install those into the frame. After a fair bit of grinding, I left with two of these. If I've done this right, this should fit in. <laughs> Seems pretty solid. The second one will go in the other side. Now the only thing missing is the tabletop. Luckily, I've already cut out all the pieces on the table saw and assembled them into this frame. And I've already mounted all the electronics to the bottom of it. So now it's just a matter of bringing it onto what's left of our legs. Then I'll get it all hooked up and this frame is basically done. Now it's finally time to move the laser onto the shelf. I've already got power back there ready to be hooked up and I've pulled this ventilation hose through the hole that we drilled and through a similar hole all the way up the top. And to finish off the fume extraction, I have a really cool 3D printed trick. So this machine has a fan built in, so it pulls out all the fumes and blows them out the back here. Now it came with this hose, which snaps on the back, but I want to save as much space as possible. So I want to get the back of the machine as close to the back of the wall. And to save some of that space, I've 3D printed this guy. This is my fancy air connector that goes from the hole that the laser has to a squished together part. These two will get glued together. Everything mounts onto the back of the printer. And just look at how perfectly this thing fits. Now we can squeeze it all the way up against the wall and just hook up the tube. And then we're basically done. Now, the big question is, does it work? <laughs> that looks great. It saves a ton of space. Everything seems to work. And the only thing I've got left to do is to hook up that hose to one of these vents. I actually have two of them, one on either side of the cabinet. But in that one over there, there was a bird family that had a nest in there. So I'm definitely not going to touch that one, which leaves me with this. And so to get the hose onto that square hole, I've 3D printed this thing, 3D printed it in blue and spray painted it white to match the wall. I'll glue a little mesh thingy on here and then glue the whole thing onto the wall, hook it up, and then it's about time that we start using this laser cutter. Everything is working, the machine is hooked up, I've connected the machine to Wi-Fi, I've downloaded the software on my computer, and we're ready for our first project. And I just realized what that is gonna be. Because when I was hooking up the exhaust port here to the tube up on the wall here, I realized that it would be great to have a little blasket up here so that I can close that when I'm not using the machine so that there's no cold air blowing into that hole all the time. I've already made a quick model of this in 3D. I've exported it in DXF and I've imported those DXF files into the software that's included with the machine. I'll just load in a sheet of plywood to the machine. I'll make sure that the focus is set on the laser by rotating this little knob until the acrylic piece lines up. And as that is done, this machine actually has a pretty cool trick to make sure that all the parts are placed onto the material. Because in the program here, where I've loaded up all my DXF files that I wanna cut out, I can actually ask the printer to scan the area. And there's a little camera in the head, which will go and take small pictures. And then in the software, will give me a visual representation of what's actually on here. So I can place all the parts and make sure that everything is cut out where I want it to be. That is super useful, especially if you're trying to put parts on a sheet that already has a bunch of holes in it. All right, we're good to go. Let's cut this thing out. And after about 12 and a half minutes of cutting, We've got all the parts for our blast gate. <laughs> all right. Now, as you can see, these parts are cut out of pretty thick wood. And if I've done this right, they should fit into each other perfectly just like that. So I chose to cut out all these parts in nine millimeter poplar because to my surprise, after a bit of testing and different thicknesses, 
It actually cuts this just fine, even though on the website it says that the thickest it can cut in wood is 7 mil. And that is also a great tip to have for you guys that want to cut stuff out of plywood, and that is to always use poplar. I discovered this many years ago when I was doing a ton of laser cutting at school, and we tried cutting out parts in both poplar and birch plywood, and in poplar you can cut thicker, you can cut faster, and you can cut with a much, much clearer edge, meaning that the edge of the wood gets much less burnt and you don't get this black, ugly residue. I haven't done anything with these parts and basically nothing is coming off. So if you're ever gonna cut stuff out of plywood, use poplar, because I mean, it's still plenty strong. Talking about being surprised by the thicknesses this thing can cut, I had some eight millimeter acrylic laying around in the shop here and tried cutting that out. And just look at this, it cuts it just fine with perfect edges. And again, on the website it says 7mm, but this is 8mm and it cut just fine. But a great tip, regardless of what thickness and material you're going to cut in, always do some test cuts. I tested a bunch of different thicknesses and speeds for this poplar to eventually land on this setting which cut through the wood without burning it unnecessarily. And the reason why it's so much easier to cut in poplar is both because it's less dense but also because it has fewer layers, so there's less glue that the laser has to cut through. But enough rambling, let's get this thing assembled and installed. Look at this, our first laser cutting project in this workshop is a success. Everything went together perfectly. I've also glued in a little magnet up top here to keep this thing in the upright position. Pull to open and push to close. I'm super happy. But hey, there's a lot more really cool stuff you can do with a laser cutter. That got me thinking back to the very first time we got a laser cutter at my own design school. That's about eight years ago now. One of the first projects I did there was to cut out some of these elliptical drawing templates. And I also cut a whole bunch of these on this machine. These are cut out out of clear two millimeter acrylic. I've engraved the size and the percentage of tilt of the circle. I cut out all four of these in about seven minutes and that is including the engraving. They go from a full circle and then have ellipses that have the same height but get more and more squished all the way down to the smallest one here. Granted, back then we did a lot more sketching and hand drawing but these things are super useful. And I've made templates for a variety of different sized circles. Now, if you want to make these as well, I'll have these available to download from my website, which is a perfect segue to a quick ad from today's sponsor, Squarespace. Because I have a website where I share the things I create, like these templates, and I built that website using Squarespace. Squarespace enabled me to super quickly and easily create my own website. You don't need to have any technical knowledge, just choose from any of their award-winning templates and start creating your own website right away. Squarespace has the tools you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. On my website, I will sell and give away everything from build plans to 3D files, and now also these elliptical drawing templates. But whatever you want to sell, Squarespace has the merchandising features to make your products look their best online. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash A-L-C-H for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So I am really happy with the way this has turned out. Everything from the material storage up here to the movable shelf and the laser cutter itself. And I have to say, I am pleasantly surprised by the fact that the laser is even more powerful than I actually thought it would be. So thank you so much to Flux for sending me this machine. If you're interested in checking it out, there's a link in the description below to where you can find these. And I'm sure you'll see me use this machine a whole bunch in future projects. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.